Hey everybody, welcome back to Homesteading Off The Grid. Uh, we're going to do an unboxing and testing of a brand new Pullin Pro 18 inch uh, 42cc gas powered two stroke chainsaw. Um, we're also going to do a compare and contrasting here as we do this because I have an old Pullin Pro uh, that I've been using for the last two years. And I know my chain's lacking oil and it's all beat up and looks beat up. Uh, guys, that's because I, I use the heck out of my saws. Now, um, I got a brand new Pullin' Pro at Lowe's for $169. I've used several different types of chainsaws throughout the years. And what I've found is that Pullin' Pro's 18 inchers uh, are a pretty good bang for your buck. Now... Um, I'm going to go ahead and open this one and, and talk about some of the things I like about the Pullin' Pro while we're doing it. So, honey, if you come up here, get them a close-up. So, I opened this already, but I haven't used it yet. I opened it at the store to make sure it was in here, make sure everything was in here. So, here is the new model. This is 2018, October right now, as of this recording. So, uh, you can tell. Let's take this off. There are some slight differences and the first difference I noticed that I think is going to be a big benefit, I hope I'm right about this, is that's the uh, chain tightening mechanism. On the older model, there was a screw up here. And uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'll use this old tool from here. I want to show you one of the biggest problems I had with the older model by taking this off. Uh, this here is how on the older model you would tighten the chain. It, it looks good. And, you know, and guys, I push these saws to the max. There's a red oak log back there behind me that's about 40 inches in diameter that I've been cutting up over the last year or so. And I need a bigger saw for that probably. But uh, when you get on the inside, there's this bolt and you're supposed to be able to turn this to move this, maneuver this up and down to tighten the chain. This part goes in the bar right here and it moves the bar back and forth to tighten the chain. Well, the problem is if you use your saw a lot, this heats up and this actually bent and then it won't screw past a certain point so it becomes very difficult to tighten the bar uh, where you want it and that leads to the chain getting too loose for safety and also it will jump and then now as the chain jumps over time because you're not keeping it tight enough that caused some wearing and tearing on the sprocket in here and it got to the point to where I basically just needed to replace the saw because I was going through chains uh, much quicker than I should have. And these chains, I mean, I get organs. I, I can get two packs of them at Lowe's for like, I think $27, but that price adds up. And after a while, you just start saying to yourself, why don't I just buy a new saw? So uh, now ideally guys, my fantasy saw is to get a steel farm boss, but that's a $1,200 saw. And I just uh, can't fit it in the budget right now. Um, I will point out, you know, this, we talk about our lifestyle and a lot of people will say in the comments oh i'd like to live like you i wish i could do that um guys it's just years worth of self-discipline of if i if i need something or if i want something buy it with cash and don't go into debt now 169 dollars was affordable we had the extra money in our budget i could buy it pay full in cash yes i could have gotten a lowe's card and gotten a 600 remington or go to the tractor supply or the place that sells the john deere stuff in the steels and probably get a 1200 chainsaw on credit but that's a trap and that's a game that once you get in you never win okay so anyway i'm hoping that this tightening mechanism here is going to be more efficient and work better than the other now if we look inside the case here we see that the brand new pulling uh, chainsaw comes with one little bottle of the 50 to 1 oil that we mix with our uh, non-ethanol gasoline for the engine and I was happy to see that it comes with an extra chain so uh, it's got the chain with some lubrication already on it uh, on the saw and it's got the extra chain I mean that's $27 worth of chains right there and it comes with this thing And let's see, I'm looking for that tool. I'm not seeing, and this is probably, somebody might have taken it out. It should have one of these 
but fortunately I still have this one. So let's take a peek in here and, and just out of curiosity, let's see how this chain tightening and loosening mechanism works on the new model. Be very careful when you're doing all this, guys. You know what? I'm gonna put my gloves on before I do this. Okay, I went to get my gloves before I twisted this hard because I would like, that's from uh, <laughs> uh, like a limb saw up there the other day. But I said it before, I'll say it again. We are not the best homesteaders on YouTube and we're not very good at making videos. I'm gonna, if I could edit out this embarrassment, maybe I would. But did you guys notice anything? Here's a hint. When I stood up, I leaned forward to go get these gloves and I looked down here and wow, look at that. You guys see that? So this tool that I thought didn't come with it actually did. Huh, I wonder if that's what this is for. Let's see. I bet you, no guys, this is neat. This allows you, look at that. Does that go there? Is this like a puzzle? Is this saw a great mystery to be solved? I don't know, I thought maybe that was a guard, like a puzzle piece that went on there that allowed you to. That's neat because with this old model, I would always carry this in my back pocket for when the chain jumped or if I needed it. And like if I forgot it in the garage and sometimes I'd be over at the neighbors cutting up wood and I'd have to walk all the way back over. But this one with the newer model comes here. Now let's see if Crazy Lake can figure out how to get it out. Look at that, it just snaps right out. Dun, dun, dun. Wow, that is super. So make sure not to lose the bolts and put that right there. And then now let's try this one. Oh look, it's got the spark plug remover thing on the other end too. And the other one didn't have that. That's something. Okay, so this one. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. There we go. Man, they must have used like an air torque wrench to put that on. That's the excuse I'll use. Yeah, for sure they used a, one of those air torque wrench things that has like 4,000 PSI. Most people probably couldn't get this off at all. I, you know, I've been working out though, so I'm able to get it off. Uh, I've been doing some pull-ups and stuff. Okay, there, so now that comes off, put that there. Take this one off. Let's see what it looks like under here. Oh, it's nice and clean. Now look at that. It looks like we got the same thing. That same bolt with that mechanism that goes up and down. And now, just, I'm going to put this here and turn it and let's see how it does. Can you see that, honey? Is it moving? One, I wanna count this to make sure I get back. Two, you see it moving? Three. Yeah. Yeah, it's moving real smooth. That's good. One. Okay, now let's get that back on there. Oh, this is nice, nice and clean. Of course, it's new, it should be, huh? Okay, now when you put this back on, you've of course always got to line this little thingamahickey right here into the doodaddle hole. Thingamahickey right into the doodaddle hole, or you're not going to be able to tighten your chain. There. Um, can you see up under there, honey, with the phone? Can you see that thingamajiggy in the doodaddle? See, give them a shot of this hole. Can you see the hole? You gotta put that in that thing in the hole. Okay. So it went in, right? Great. Now from here, I'll be able to just twist this one way or the other to tighten or loosen the chain. And this one is not bent. And guys, I said we're not the best homesteaders. But let me tell you something about homesteading or anything else. The more you do it correctly, the better you get over time. So the last Pull and Pro chainsaw lasted me about two years. I bet you this one will probably last me at least three just because I'm a little bit better at chainsawing. Well, I'm probably a whole lot better at chainsawing. I'm a lot better at chainsawing than I have been for the last, you know, than I was two years ago. So, uh, and to be honest with you guys, that's going down there kind of tight. I wouldn't. I would venture to say that bolt might be a little bit bent because this one goes down nice and easy. 
So, that might be somewhat of, a, of an issue there. Looks like my brand new chainsaw might have a bent bolt. Let's see if I can get this on there because we want to be safe and it doesn't go on all the way and we're not being safe. But yeah, it's on there. Good, okay. Now, you see you got a little bit of play in the, in the chain. We want that. And I'm just gonna twist this. And of course, you don't wanna screw these down all the way if you're gonna adjust the chain, but that's perfect where it is. So now, guys, the, gotta take this off. I uh, can't take it back once you put fuel in it. So now I just wanna show you, here is where the fuel goes. Can you see this, honey? Give them a close up, just like the old model. And it's a 50 to one mix. And I like it's got that safety catch in there so you don't lose this. And then of course your bar oil goes here. Um, and guys, this is vital. If you want your bar and your chain to last longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and fuel this up off camera, get some oil in the bar oil reservoir. And then we're gonna start it up and see how it goes. And we're gonna cut a big log with it and see how it cuts. Okay guys, we're fueled up. We have bar oil in. Um, I'm gonna show you how to prime it and start it. If you'll come closer, honey, let's show them this. The primer is right here. And so we're gonna push this in 10 times. That's what it says. Now on my old model, it worked when the saw was new, but as it got older, you had to prime it more and it was up to where I had to push this 20 times. So let's do it 10 like it says. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And you see the fuel in the primer bubble so now here with the choke you pull it all the way out and then you push this only halfway back in and now the choke will stay on once we start until we hit the trigger which will turn the choke off and always make sure that your chain is locked okay if we pull it back we unlock it and this will start spinning which is dangerous but let's have it forward and also guys i have my eye pro my gloves and my ear pro safety first with everything we do okay so let's give it a go Well, I pulled it 10 times and it didn't start. So let's prime it a couple more times. One, two, three, four, five, six. I did it 10 more or six more times. So since this is a brand new chainsaw, this is the very first time I've ever started it. Um, I'm gonna let it run for just a second with the choke on. That's been long enough. I'm gonna pull the trigger.
was my fault. That wasn't the chain's fault. I set the brake and kind of gave it an irregular little trigger there. So now I've rolled my log and uh, the brake set. Let's start it back up. I'm not going to prime it. It's going to pull it out to choke it just a little bit, set it back in. Start it right back up. Looks like a, it made a nice clean cut. I got my cut off a little bit. That was my fault, not the, not the saw's fault. But uh, these saws are not heavy. They're relatively lightweight and um, it cuts pretty much like the last one did when it was new. The last one again was two years old, worn out. The cogs were kind of shot, just a lot of wear and tear. So I replaced it with the same model. $169 really is a pretty good bang for your buck because I know I'll get at least two and probably three years worth of hard use out of this. I mean, you see the wood we cut up here? You're not even seeing one fifth of our actual wood supply. We've got um, two or three large red oaks down over there. We've got a bunch of wood up here. We do a lot of work and for $169, these saws really get the job done. So let's say the last one lasted two years, 170 divided by two is $85 a year, okay, plus chains. Um, that's not a bad deal. You figure that's half the price of one load of firewood where we live. So thanks for being with us for another video if, if, uh, here at Homesteading Off The Grid. Make sure to join us for more next time and subscribe if you've not, and we'll see you next time.